Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Me and the kitty have some exciting new Cubes tutorials for you coming up. And uh, so today we want to talk a little bit about one of the more popular questions I got, and that is adding a VPN. So we'll go ahead and do a little bit of summary here, and then we're going to jump on over to the computer and talk about how you can get that guy working. So first and foremost, I can't tell you every instance and every kind, don't need me an email like, how do I get Malvad VPN connected? I don't know. I'm not using Malvad VPN. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the basics of utilizing a cube with a VM, how you're going to go ahead and get that done and what steps you're going to need to take in order to pull off working with the VM. Ultimately, if you'll remember, Cubes utilizes a various of network layers in order to make sure that things stay uh, as secure as possible. And so in light of that, what we're going to do is create a new um, we're going to create a new VM that's going to be another network manager. This one is going to be a network manager for a VPN. So every one of your VMs you want going through the VPN, you go ahead and route that one. Anything you want through ClearNet, you use through the main system firewall. And anything you want through Tor, you go ahead and use with your um, Hunix VM. And so you'll have a lot of extra options. Now, what I'm using on this one is my own private VPN that is spun up on my Linode server. And uh, I don't remember if I have a tutorial on doing that. Um, if I do, I'll go ahead and leave that linked down below. This would work with any VPN service. However, what you need to keep in mind is that um, what I'm doing here is the open VPN protocol because it's the overall the easiest. It works out really well. And for most people, you'll have this option. If your VPN provider says you have to install our third party software, you may or may not actually have to do that. That's something that you want to research into a little bit further. There are entire tutorials about specifically getting Malvad to work with cubes. Um, which will have a little bit more information than I cover in my video. What I want to give you is just the basics that's going to work with a global amount of VPNs. You might just have to, I, I might give you just enough information to go, ah, that's the step I might have been missing. And it took me a couple hours to figure this out because there's a lot of moving parts in here. Uh, some of it is just how Fedora manages your, uh, your VPNs differently than uh, the Linux Mint does, for example. And uh, just some of it's just making sure everything is set up correctly, how all the networks communicate together. And I could probably try like Thomas Edison. I think I did like 15 ways it won't work. <laughs> so if there's questions about what it won't work or other ideas, go ahead and let me know about those. But um, for the most part, I give you a good tutorial here on, on getting started. So from here, we're going to go ahead and jump on into the computer itself so you can see what this looks like in real time. So to begin our process here, what we're going to do is we need to create another cube that will manage network. So if you'll remember running at cubes, you have the option to either use your basic system firewall, which is your main clear net internet, or you can use uh, one of the uh, the Hunix one. So if you have a look at the Hunix uses the Sys Hunix, uh, and that is a network that provides action through the Tor network. And then the default here is your basic Sys firewall, which grabs information from SysNet and from Sys USB to feed information into whatever your uh, particular um, network is. So you can see over here the net VM at the top tells you what things are programmed to. What we're going to do is we're going to create another VM that is going to also provide network, only that one is going to provide our VPN network. So as I mentioned in the intro here, you need to make sure that you have a few things here. And um, one of those is you need to know which IP addresses you're going to use. And if you're using your VPN to jump to different regions and locations, you're just going to need to update your firewall a little bit. Your firewall makes sure that no connections go inside your VM outside of that VPN, period. Once your VPN happens to fail or something goes weird, every other connection into that VM is going to fizzle. And so to do this, we're going to start in by creating a new cube. So our new cube, let's just call this network VPN. So we'll do 
network and dash VPN. I'm going to change the color. Um, now, you'll note that our, uh, our system network here is already red. We're going to have a second one of these to manage our VPN. So I want that to be a different color so I can easily spot which ones are which. Let's go ahead and choose. It doesn't matter. Let's choose the blue. So we're going to grab an app VPN, uh, which is going to be uh, an app VM, excuse me, which is going to be a persistent home and a volatile root. So anything that happens in root is going to disappear when it shuts down. Anything that happens in the home directory is going to remain. Fortunately, all of the configuration settings for B VPNs stay inside of your home folder, not inside of your root. Now, as for your template, you want to choose Fedora on this current build of cubes. Debian does not have all of the network components. You'd have to install them under some extra things. You'd have to do that under template VP, uh, VMs. And I don't know if I want to add extra software into my template VM when Fedora already has this set up. Now, we also want to change this down to sys firewall, not default sys firewall, just in case the defaults change. Let's go ahead and launch our settings after creation. And then under your advanced tab, you need to provide this one here, provides network access to other cubes. Leave everything else the same. So this is going to create our new cube based on our Fedora. And then it's going to pull this guy up here. And what we want to do is under our services, we want to drop down our network manager. This is going to give us another network manager up here and the ability to manage your VPNs. So let's go ahead and add that and then push. We'll push apply for now. We're going to want to come into firewall rules in a bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set everything up and show you that it works. And then we're going to come back to this. Although I know exactly what we need to do in here. Um, everything else here is fine. So we'll just push OK. So what we're going to do is let's grab our network VPN and we're going to go ahead and start it. Now you'll see the yellow indicates it's starting and once it is started, give it just a moment and we're going to have another network manager popping up here. Now our original one here is based on Debian and you'll see in here there's no options under your VPN type. That's actually just a, a root of Debian. Here's our new one which is now based on Fedora and now we actually have all of the various elements to create a VPN. So this is the part where, again, you're going to have to do a little bit of research. I'm using an open VPN uh, module for my personal private VPN, so I know exactly what that's going to do in every instance. So what we need to do, though, is I need to get my open VPN uh, applications or my, my files into this network. Now, I've already downloaded them previously under my personal VM, so we're just going to go ahead and open up my personal uh, VM files. And under our downloads, you'll see I have two profiles here. Uh, this one, the difference is one of these is set up for, uh, for a later, um, or an earlier uh, protocol. One of them is a later protocol. I grabbed two just in case one of them didn't work. I know that 19 is going to work for me. This is the newer protocol, so it should be a little bit more secure. We're going to copy this to another app VM and select, whoop, select our network VPN. And once that is set in over there, then that's going to appear in our network VPN under our cubes incoming. I'm just going to go ahead and keep it there. There's no reason I have to move it unless I want to really want a clean system. I can move it somewhere else. But now that it's on that VM and it has to be on that VM because this VM can't access the other one, right? Everything has to be conf uh, configured within itself. Go ahead and hit our... Uh, create and then we're going to just navigate to that particular file and here is all of our VPN settings now the next thing is this password with certificates um, for whatever reason newer versions of open VPN this seems to fizzle with I don't know exactly what it is all my Linux mint VPNs using the exact same uh, protocol, the exact same um, uh, server for VPNs. I can just stick with this, but on Fedora and probably on Arch and other things, I just need to use password here. So now we're going to enter the credentials that you have for your VPN. 
And then once we, uh, let's also go over here under IVP6, we're going to hit disable that so that there's no IPv6 connections coming in, only IPv4. That might change depending on how your VPN is set up. I know with mine, I just don't have IVP6 set up. Once you hit save, it's going to ask us for new network rings. So we're going to go ahead and enter a password. Just for consistency, I keep this one at the login for my main computer. If you've gotten this far into my cubes network, congratulations, you can gain access to my key ring. <laughs> uh, hopefully you haven't though. So now we have all that set up and now under our VPN connections, we're going to go ahead and turn this guy on and then that should automatically connect to the VPN. Ah, I did not enter the password correctly. That's why. <laughs> I, I typed the wrong password. Uh, there, I, I, I have a, a various salt and then I have some extra junk in for different things. I typed the wrong password. That was entirely my fault. Now it says our VPN is established. And if we pull down our, let's go ahead and look first at our personal Firefox. And then we're also going to pull down our network VPN Firefox. We're going to pull both these guys out. We're going to search for what is my IP. Okay, so my... And over here, you'll see it's 174-204-7128. So this is the raw, and this is the VPN. So now what we're going to do is under this, now to use this VPN, what we're going to do is pick whichever VM we want to use our new network VPN. And we're going to go ahead and pick our settings. And remember, just change your net cube. We'll go up to network VPN. We do have a little notice here because this is not, you know, the 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 quote unquote standard way. It's not one of the official methods, but it's going to work just fine. We'll go ahead and hit our start. And then once that's started, we'll go ahead and pull open this Firefox. And we'll do my what is my IP again. And you'll see that it goes up to our uh, our individual network. Now, there's one more setting we have to make inside of our network VPN. So let's go ahead and head off a look over our settings. We're going to head on over to our firewall, and we're going to limit outgoing connections to. And this is going to be the IP address of our VPN. So depending on your VPN, you might have one IP address you could use, you might have a pile of them. But this is going to allow only traffic coming and going to this IP address into your network. So let's go ahead and pull this guy back up and we'll rerun our Firefox. And we'll type in our what is my IP. And you'll see we have 104, but if our VPN happens to get itself disconnected, now you'll see that the internet is going to fizzle. And every connection into this VM is going to fizzle, whether that's being some file trying to get to the internet or uh, the terminal trying to get to the internet. Just everything is going to fizzle because that VPN has been disconnected. If I go ahead and reconnect the VPN, and re-hit my reset here, boom, it gets back and works. So now we have a way that we can safely connect our various cubes onto our VPN utilizing the system firewall settings. So if I happen to need to get logged into our individual um, VPN system, I just go ahead and choose which networks I'd like to do that. Now, I'm not a person, as you know, that says everybody has to be on a VPN at all times. VPNs are not that that uh, holy grail of, of all amazingness. So I'm not going to set this to turn on. I'm not going to set a script to automatically turn on the VPN. When I need a VPN, it's because I know I'm at a place where I have a higher risk of security. So I'm going to use the VPN. So... I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like this. And when I happen to visit a coffee shop and I log into, you know, Starbucks, 
a publicly available wireless network, I'm going to go ahead and reroute all my traffic through the VPN, or maybe I'll just go ahead and use the Tor network. Who knows? Uh, but hopefully this gives you an idea. So, of course, the things you're going to need, you're going to need to know how to set up your VPN. It's best if you can get one with an easy install open VPN file. There are some tutorials that you can do with a little bit more advanced to automatically connect the scripts, to automatically reconnect. All that type of stuff is doable. But I think in, uh, in the general case for your average user, utilizing that open VPN protocol and setting that firewall rule to block all traffic that's not through that VPN, through your network VPN, is going to be secure enough. So hopefully this helped you out. Thank you for watching. Let me know other questions you have about cubes in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.